Hey, you doing here? Okay, uh, back with another live stream on the guess what? Net Pro Max <laughs> DNS server. Still trying to figure that thing out. I actually haven't done anything on it in the last couple of days. I took one uh, Sunday to, uh, what am I trying to say? I, know I just saw my last videos on the 10th, and this is the 12th. So, yeah, I saw that somewhere. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, Sunday, this is Monday. I'm all confused again. Sunday, I didn't even uh, do any work, you know. I just, uh, well, I did <laughs> actually had to work, wash clothes and did all kinds of things around, you know, and, but not on the computer type of stuff. I mean, I, I, I watched videos and relaxed in between washing clothes and doing other chores and stuff. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> instead of trying to figure out, I needed to get my brain a rest from trying to figure this DNS stuff out. Um, so, so I haven't done any more studying or anything on it, but I do have... <clears throat> And I thought, I started to, I thought, well, I'll do that like today. I thought maybe I should do some studying before I make a video. But then what happens half the time, most of the time, is I study through stuff, and then I have to try to, and then when I make a video, I have to try to figure it out, find it all again, figure out what it was I thought was important. So it's just, twi I do the work twice, basically. And uh, so that just makes everything take longer. <clears throat> and uh, sometimes it's actually a little more, it's best if I, while I'm reading stuff, for me, because uh, I don't remember retain stuff for very long uh, most of the time, it's best for me to go on and uh, do it when I see it, you know, instead of saying, okay, I'm going to, I mean, like I used to, I used to do that. I used to do research mode for a day or two or a week or a month sometimes and then go back. And I still, my brain was much better, but I still had trouble <clears throat> if I did it for a month. <clears throat> of course, I'm going to forget some of that stuff. But anyway, let's go to the desktop. And, uh, you know, go ahead and log in to the, got the Net Pro Max up and running. <clears throat> Beginning to remember that password. <coughs> and, um, checking my sound there <clears throat> while I was at it. Uh, terminal. Okay, now I don't have anything to run right now. Oh, I do want to show something though. Let's go ahead and get, uh, let me look at my notes too. Yeah, I got some searches I want to do that maybe will help me target. I know more, but now that I've learned more, I know more about what I really ought to be looking for, I think. And uh, <clears throat> Zen Map, yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to show is Zen Map. I didn't click good it's a good thing I didn't click on that yet because uh, I don't need it <clears throat> I wonder if this I just out of curiosity let's see if Zen map is on this machine well it's probably not because yeah because it's a graphic user it wouldn't run <clears throat> oh it might you know you can actually well I've done it on machines that had desktops installed yeah I don't know about a machine like this it doesn't have this is a remote, you know, terminal into the Net Pro Max, which has no graphic user interface installed. It probably wouldn't work. But something I found out, uh, I always knew, I always knew you could do something like this from back from all the way back, you know, playing, okay, when you play w games in, do you know, back in, when I had Windows 3.1, most of the games you would play them, it would end in, in DOS mode, you know, DOS or DOS, whichever way you want to want to say it. And, um, uh, it would open up the game's graphic user interface. So, um, I might have messed that up. No, I got it. So, we'll get Zen Map opened up. So, uh, uh, and, and uh, there was earlier in, my, like in 2005, as you know, first two or three years, I remember seeing, I think I remember seeing a few. I don't know if I ever saw any Linux games that actually went into like the terminal first and then opened up or whatever. You know, like that's what the DOS games used to do. That open up, they would act automatically open up a terminal window and you'd see it starting up that way. Some of them you had to actually go in there and start the game from a terminal window. And uh, since I didn't game a lot, you know, I never have. Uh, then I didn't get into that a lot. Uh, learned a lot about it over the years, but um, long story years. Ago, short a few years ago I was uh, talking back and forth with somebody that was uh, building a um, 
What were they building it on? Um, they were building it on a single board computer. And I don't remember what it was. I thought it was pretty cool. And I, and uh, anyway, I won't go into this sto long story. But anyway, they were setting up. Uh, they had it set up to where it didn't need a full desktop. It just executed that game and ran the game, just like you know you did in DOS and all that. And I was like, well, how do you? And it was in Linux, though. It's like, well, how do you do that? So they told me the commands, and it's real simple. You just set up. Um, I, and I can't remember it, but anyway, you just set it up. And if you've ever been in the boot, uh, in the boot screen of Linux, you know there are more options than just logging in. There's uh, these drop-down lists and stuff, and so you can pick what you want to log into. For instance, the kind of desktop you want to. So, and I wasn't interested in gaming. I got to thinking, hey, I got this old Pentium 4 that I have Kden Live Video Editor on, and I thought the thing is, it it's half of its resources usage is just to have the desktop up and running. So I thought, what if you could just run KDN Live or any other app that's intensive like that alone, standalone? <clears throat> and sure enough, you can. Now, only, of course, the only thing is you don't have your file managers. You can't just click over here to Crusader or anything else. But I got, I did do it. I used it. I set it up and used it that way some. And uh, <clears throat> it did make a difference, a noticeable difference. I think that it seemed that the videos rendered a little bit faster. And you didn't hear the machine working itself to death, you know, when you're rendering. It's when you're rendering the videos is the time. While you're editing the videos, it didn't. It was no problem. It's when you're rendering them. I guess I could have saved the file and then rebooted and rendered it. I didn't think about that. Oh, I did think about it, I guess. But anyway, uh, <clears throat> when you're opening up, if you need to open up a file, you don't have a file manager. You just have to use the, you know, like, say, if this was some regular program, you'd say open. Okay, so, like, this says scan. It's only going to open scans. It won't open else but when you go to open a file then uh, <coughs> uh, that's the only way you could do it and does but it did work and I was able to edit my videos and get to my files that I needed that way but it's not my the way I like to do it because like half the time I don't know where they are and I got to go find them well I need my file manager so <laughs> anyway um, long Long sidetrack story, but anyway, let's see. Now, this so happens that recently used in ZenMap are these folders that I had made, you know, uh, with my scans. Let's see. This looks like the newest one. Net Pro Max, Bishop Code Biz, Gateway. Now, I think <clears throat> that I actually, it ended up saving, like if you say save all, then it'll get all of the scans you just did since you opened the program. So I think there's going to be two. Yeah, there's two in here. I think I can. No, you got to open one at a time. So this one will be one or the other. Oh, I see. It saved it just the way I left it. Well, it just saved it the way I left it. Here's what I wanted to show right off the bat. This uh, ports uh, tab up here shows this is the, uh, this should be the uh, Net Pro Max. I don't think you can search in the window, can you? Oh. Can't type, save my life. Oh, that's opening a file. It's not searching. Okay. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Well, it doesn't say, net, it doesn't know the name of the machine. Uh, well, because I didn't give Net Promax as its host name, I usually do. But it's a fo Fedora. Uh, it's running on Fedora. It does know that. So, long, uh, the whole scan, you know, not, none of, the thing I was looking for mostly in the scan was. And it's Apache, and of course you can see Fedora. It says right there, Fedora. So I wanted to know if port 53 was open to the Internet to make sure that the DNS server could see it on the Internet. Yeah, it's open. 80 is open, and 443, which is the uh, you know HTTPS SSL web page port. Uh, these are just, uh, I must have installed printing support, web, web printing support, but I don't have it turned on, so it's not not. Or running or anything <clears throat> so either that or they just got installed by default but I think I probably did that maybe otherwise I don't know why well sane is for scanning jet direct is for printing <clears throat> so <clears throat> those are uh, there but they're not open to the internet so I scanned it on I scanned it via my public IP address instead of like going bishopco.com or the local IP I thought no wait a minute I really want to find out what's going on, what is happening through the internet, then I need to scan it from the internet. So I use my internet IP address. That's the whole point I'm getting to. So now let's open that other scan. 
uh, which I guess is the second one it should be. Yeah, okay. Now this one, see, 453 is filtered. 80 is open. This is the gateway. See the Bane? That's how I know it's the gateway. Uh, and then 443 is closed uh, to the Internet. And and so are the same in the JetDirect port. JetDirect's printing 9100 <coughs> default print or internet share print. It's not just for internet. It's for local. Yeah, it's for local domain too. So it's fault printer sharing, and so is, and that uh, I guess is the default. I don't remember that, but I guess that's the fault uh, scanner. See, I use both uh, quite often. My uh, that's the only working printer we got in the house anymore is my mom's, and it's a printer scanner fax. And so, and, it's, and it scans really fast and does a good job. So, and I have a scanner in here, and actually a bigger, bigger window on it, bigger scan surface on it, but it's slow and old. It's a good one, HP 3970 or something like that. Anyway, hers is uh, newer, and also it has a feed on it, so you can put a whole bunch of pages in there. And so I, I uh, it, it works on, and it's a Wi-Fi. It works on the Wi-Fi. Well, it can do Wi-Fi or wired, either one. And so anyway, I have it, you know, I hook up to it on the internet. <coughs> I mean, on the, on the, not on the internet. I don't open that up. <laughs> it's too dangerous. <coughs> I don't have no need to do it from the, <coughs> I don't have a need to do it from the internet because I, I don't use it from somewhere else like that. And you couldn't really run and put something in the scanner <laughs> and then scan it from the internet if you were out somewhere else. So anyway. So you could let someone else do it, but uh, <clears throat> uh, that is a thought. I could do it. I could do that. I could set it up so that I could do that to help mom, like if I was not here. But anyway, don't want those ports open to the internet all the time. <clears throat> and I don't want, let's see, where's the other scan? How do you get back to the other one once you've, oh, you do this. And I guess uh, same no, same IP, but this would probably be. No, that's still the Bane. Okay, so. And that's still the Bane. <clears throat> I don't I thought you could have more than one open at a time, is what I thought. Well, let's go back to the other one. It's the one that matters the most. <clears throat> anyway, the only thing open on the Bane system, <clears throat> which is still the one that's online right now. I'll just say open scan. I don't know what's going on. Oh, oh. So net formatting. So, well, I know the top one in that folder is there. Okay, now we're back to. But I want 5300 open because I think it has. I think it, I don't see how it could work if it wasn't for my DNS server to work. Port 80 and 443. I want those open. Oh, okay. I thought I saw port 22 open and I was worried about that. I don't want it open to the internet. I want it open on a local network, but not on the internet. But it's not even showing up. So. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know where. Maybe I saw it on the, the vein or something. In the list, there's sometimes mentions of other ports. But no. Okay, yeah. That's it. Yeah. Let's see what happens if I do that. Same one. I, I guess you can't. When you're opening them now, if you just got through doing the scans, they'll be there. Might be a. I thought you had to do is just do that. <clears throat> to uh, see the other one like let's see this is I think I guess that you just have to hit scan and scan it again okay so I, that's I'm done with that anyway that's all I wanted to show now oh there it is I've got three windows open you're if you were a windows user see I'm not used to having I, I don't work that way I don't open I normally never open more than one thing in the same window or workspace I call them usually, usually call them desktops but I open one thing in each one so that I can do that really fast and but sometimes I get more than see I didn't even see it happen it opened quick so there we go so now yeah you can do that so here's the uh, the Bane that's that's the uh, <coughs> the, uh, de the one out in the garage and then here's the uh, the one open on in Fedora <coughs> that's the one net Pro Max okay there we go okay so um, don't think I need, yeah, I was going to look, I was wanting to look at the port list and see. I guess I just thought I saw. Yeah, and in this, see, you can tell right quick, too, the black green ones are, are open and the others are 
filtered. It says on there filtered. I know state filtered. So 22 does not even show up when you scan that way. And I believe it does show up when you scan it on the local. Like if I scan 153, um, <clears throat> okay, that's the gateway. That's closed. I mean, yeah, the gateway 500. So if I scan 153 on the uh, local port, I'll do it. Just since I'm going around in circles about it, I might as well find out <clears throat> what's going on with all that. Uh, so far, I don't, yeah, there it is, 22 right there. So when you scan the local port, then it sees 22. This is what I want, though. So now I feel much better about that. Takes a minute. That's the reason I was showing you the scans that I've already done, because it, you don't have to wait for them to finish. Actually, I could open one of those other scans, but, yeah. So, <clears throat> but that's going to be the, what I want. I want to, I want to, I mean, 90, 90. Uh, that's for the web. Yeah, you know, that's the remote admin port that uh, Cockpit Warp uses, and I don't want. Of course, you don't want that open on the internet either. So that uh, <clears throat> let's wait for it to to scan and just make sure. <clears throat> Actually, we know for sure they're not open on the internet. But now we're seeing, on a local scan, we're seeing what's open to the local uh, network. <clears throat> so, yeah. Takes a while sometimes. Let's just let it finish and move on. <clears throat> okay, so um, got this up and running so I can do stuff. Let's do my first search. And uh, so what I'm trying to build is a Fedora 28 DNS name server, but... That's not enough either because it can be a caching ser name server <clears throat> and uh, just to uh, help your local network find, you know, the sites you go to a lot real faster is basically what it's for. Uh, especially if you had a big local network, it'd be a good thing, you know, like your business or something. But I, what I really want is a th authoritative name server. So I'm going to search for, and I want to, I'm going to try searching for Fedora 28 because... That'll get me much closer to the exact configuration I want. Authority. If I've spelled it wrong, it should. I spelled that whole thing right. <clears throat> oh no. Door twenty-eight. DNS. Oh, name authority of name server. Yeah, I did it all wrong. <clears throat> so, um, I want DNS authoritative name server. Yes. Okay. Now, then. I'm going to do this because that way, if I keep that up there, I don't lose it. <clears throat> okay. It did it again. Door 28 DNS authoritative name server. Authoritative? Yeah, I don't think authoritative is even a word, is it? We'll we'll try and get it some right. So why does it keep doing that? Authoritative, authoritative, A T H O R I T. T H O R I T A T. Why am I having so much trouble? Authoritative. Did you mean authoritative name server? Authoritative. <coughs> I don't know how they spell it, but that might make a difference. Let's look at some of my... <coughs> see how they spell it on the instructional. There may be... I guess authoritative is a word, but it's used in a different... You know, or authoritative or authoritative, I, I guess they are both words, real words, but they're used in different circumstances. My <clears throat> convig file is where I would find it. Actually, I think that's the quickest way to find it. 
close that again. I'm going to delete all that just so that it won't. Uh, yeah, I want to make sure I'm looking for the right thing. Minat Commander, ETC, I think I'm starting to remember her name. Config, I think it is. Sure, everything seems to be working over there. H-I-J-K-L-M. <clears throat> name, config. Uh, I just want to view it. I don't want to mess it up. This is the one with the note. Authoritative. That's why I thought it should. See, I tried to learn how to spell the word. Authoritative. Okay. So I want authoritative. That's what I meant. I'm not going to even do that again. I'm tired of going in a circle. Authoritative name circle. Uh, sometimes I'll have ideas that turn me in circles <clears throat> just because I think I need it that, you know, I want to do something in a certain way. Let's go over here and uh, see if this is done. That way I can close this. It should be done. Yeah, it's done. It's a nice, lots of nice stuff right there. Let's just quickly go. Okay, so we got 5380. Oh, <clears throat> Well, in the end, it's still the same. But when I was looking, when it was happening, okay, now that says, hmm. <clears throat> but it does show up differently on the first page. So, ports, hosts, which I believe that's telling you what's up, you know, open on the internet. Okay, now port, and this is all the ports in the state they're in. Open SSH, and I know it works because I've used it. 53, you know, that, that one I want. 80, of course, we want open. 443, we want open. That is open. 990, open. SSL, Zeus admin, question mark. <clears throat> and that's where all that stuff comes in, all that codes and stuff. Oh, it's RSA keys. You know, when I say, see, this is an RSA key. There's different kind of keys. You know, there's SSL encryption. There's RSL A key. You know, RSA keys are what you need. Like you have to make RSA keys on your server and your and your and your <coughs> um, client machine if you want to. Uh, you can log in like to like the SSH or SSH shell or uh, Mostly I use it for SS, SSH, uh, SFTP from one machine to the other. And actually, I, from what I gather now, I used to always just use the username and password in Crusader. have always done it, and it keeps saying it's not supported now. And I think I, fi I figured out la last year or sometime that it will work if you set up an RSA key on your uh, public and private keys and everything, and then it'll work. Uh, but I actually did try it once, and... One day, well, a month or two ago, when I was turned around in my head and I wasn't feeling good, I couldn't think straight. I never did get it working, but uh, <clears throat> so I've been just using file filezilla because it still does it the other way. But um, anyway, that's well. Let's see the public key. That's the public key right there. So I guess that's the public key. That's what it is. SSL TLS randomness does not represent time so okay anyway um <clears throat> yeah if you just okay now that's something i hadn't noticed if you just look here it shows those ports to be open and that's where i got my worries of course this is the local scan and if you look over here it shows them to be closed so now i'm going to open that scan again because now I can't remember. Okay, now we're in the other one. Let's see. Yeah, the public IP. And this is the same machine. Now let's see. Yeah, it do, they don't show up on the public IP. That's what I thought. Okay. So we, we, it's all set up the way I want it in a safe manner. So that uh, you don't, you know, the reason I don't want uh, SFTP open is because I used to run FTP server for years. And so I could share files easily with, well, with anybody I wanted to. Uh, 
I would put F, you know, FTP, I would just put regular FTP links, no login, no nothing to people to download my music, like all, all of the album in a zip file or something like that. And, uh, People kept running scripts on it and trying to log in. I kept getting all, in my logs all these reports of, you know, 20 or 100 even at times failed logins. So, oh, there's a pro, there's an application that I don't know if it's on this new Fedora, but it's called fail to ban I think it's failed the number two ban <clears throat> And uh, it will, you can set, or it's set like to a default number, I don't know, 10 or something or 7. And, but you can set it to whatever you want, and then if the same IP keeps trying to log in, it'll ban them, and it just won't let them even access your server anymore, and that helps cut that down a lot. And I never did ever catch anybody successfully logging in, you know, like using crackers and stuff and breaking my password, but it was using up my bandwidth and causing, basically, you're getting to be doing it so much, I was afraid that pe- legitimate people that just wanted to, I want them to download my music. There's no need to log in. It's there for free. <clears throat> and they just want to log in so they can mess up your machine, you know, and try to, you know, if they can log in as, as via SFTP and do it as root, then they could do anything they want to your machine. That's what they're, I'm sure they were trying to do. So, uh, let me get this saved. I'm going to make a new folder. There. <clears throat> okay. So that should be pretty good. And then you'll get, uh, yeah, I got two files. Oh, I guess it still had two showing in the window. So you got the local and the external. I put local because I thought that's all I was getting. I also re- made that folder name wrong. I always do that for some reason. I always want to make the A. I do that on that particular word all the time. <clears throat> then it's not a real word, of course, but I just want to make sure it worked before I close it down. Try to save a little bit of resource usage. Okay, so yeah, now can we actually go to work now? Let's see. Administration guide, draft DNS Fedora Wiki project, chapter ten, DNS service Fedora documentation. I'll just start at the top. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Don't need to be in there right now. <clears throat> okay. Oh, this is like the whole thing. I hadn't run across this before. This is the Fedora DNS administration. It just says, oh, yeah, administration guide draft DNS. This is just a draft? <clears throat> okay, DNS queries. Yeah, so it's going to be in there maybe. But wikis are kind of hard to find stuff in. So let's see. This is Chapter 10, but it is the Fedora docs. This is, I guess, the old documentation. Let's try this first. Draft. Oh, okay. Make it bigger where I can see it. <coughs> I don't know why draft on there and that tells me they're not through you know it's not really meant to be published is what it tells me I don't it sure does make it hard to read doesn't it <clears throat> okay so I've got the IP address in there what I need is authority now here's where that comes in having that up there so if I get off this page it's still up there Or door 28 DNS authoritative name server. Actually, I wanted it to say, well, it doesn't matter, but 28 authoritative DNS name server. <laughs> but I think that's fine. Let's do a search in here in that wiki. Okay, create a page. Ohio Linux. 
Boy, that didn't see those wiki searches never work very good. So usually I do better searching on the page for like single words. Cause if you try to do more than one word, <clears throat> let's do this one too, just to see. Sometimes I hit the wrong thing on my keyboard. And so that's exactly how I changed my there. That's exactly, and I have no idea what keys I hit, but I, the, the default, uh, well, in, in, in Thunderbird, email client, see, I like to send links to myself. Go to file. I usually don't. I just go files, email link. Well, there's not a shortcut for it. That's one reason why I do it that way. And then when I get in the page, uh, when I want to, when I want to turn something into a link, you select it, highlight it. I use it with the keyboard to highlight it. Like if that one is right there. Of course, it would be blue when I highlight it. That's a search results highlight. And then hit control L and then a little menu comes up and you hit enter and it's a link. Well, I messed up trying to do it one day and I changed that. I finally figured out by accident by hitting the wrong key again by accident. I changed it to K control. I think it's control. It's either control. Yeah. Control L is what it, the default is. I changed it to control K. So now I'm beginning to remember it. So I'm beginning to use it again. But for the longest time, I just thought of somehow I broke it <clears throat> and I have no, I looked in the keyboard shortcuts, you know, for the system and I can't find, and I looked in Thunderbird. I can't find like a way to do it other than, you know, in the GUI. So I have no idea how to do it. I guess I could look it up, but I haven't done that. Okay, so although a name server can be both authoritative and recursive, which is the uh, DNS caching server, at the same time, it is recommended to, not to combine configuration types. To be able to perform their work, authoritative servers should be available to all clients all the time. That's what I want. On the other hand, since the recursive lookup takes far more time and than authoritative responses, recursive servers should be available to a restricted number of clients. That's why they're always saying, showing you how to put your, your allowed clients into that config file. Okay. Otherwise, they are prone to uh, distributed denial of service attacks. Okay. Let's see. Let's go back up. Authoritative name servers answer to, res to resource records that are part of their zones only. This category includes both primary, master, and secondary slave name servers. Okay, I've read a little, I've saw some videos and read a little bit. Mostly saw videos, I think. Lately, I mean, a long time ago, I read a lot, studied this stuff a lot, trying to get it going. I never did get, never did not quite understand it all. Recursive name servers offer resolution services, but they are not authoritative for any zone. Answers for all resolutions are cached in a memory for a fixed period of time, which is specified by the retrieve. Okay. I do did see in that in that <coughs> file that I was using as a reference there for the note that's in there. What did I just do? Oh, I guess I needed to click in the screen now. Make sure we're in the right screen. I hit F3 and that popped up. Okay, so if you're building an authoritative DNS servers, do not enable recursion. If you are building a recursive caching DNS server, you need to enable recursion. Now, recursion was on by default, and it it says up here at the top. Uh, now, if your recursive DNS server has a public IP address, you must enable uh, enable access control to limit the queries to your legitimate users. Failing to do so will cause your server to become part of a large-scale DNS SF amplification attack. Implementing BCP38 within your network would greatly reduce such an uh, attack surface. So I was like, I don't know what all else am I going to have to do to make it into one. And see, I said, re I changed that to, re it was recursive yes by default. I changed recursive no, thinking, you know, okay, that is that, that is <clears throat> hopefully will <laughs> turn it into a authoritative name server. But it says up there at the top, and this could be provided by Red Hat. Uh, bind package to configure the ISC bind name DNS server as caching only name server as a local host DNS on resolver only. Now I had decided from all this, uh, and I've been watching videos on how to set up 
they didn't call it authoritative name server because uh, <clears throat> you know they were just saying this is how you set up your websites on to go on the internet you know I didn't know to call it authoritative at the time and so um, so I thought okay then I think I'm still okay and uh, I just need to uh, edit my config files accordingly and the videos I watched went back and forth you know and I mean some of them were well, some of them went back and forth in the video, so it's been really hard for me to sort out in my head since it's also complicated anyway. But uh, <clears throat> that's where I'm beginning to understand this part. Uh, well, I need to make sure I have everything installed and up and running to make an authoritative name server, don't I? Because what I installed by just clicking the uh, in the Fedora 28 web installer, I just clicked a box that said install DNS server. It didn't say what kind or anything. I didn't, the only clue I got that it, what kind it was is this note in the config, name config file, etc, etc, name config file. etc is the folder it's in. Okay, so, um, <coughs> let's see. Yeah, I, I, what I had done, see, I, like I said, I've already installed them before and tried to set them up before several times. Used to n remember more about it, and so I tried to just go, hopefully remember, you know, thought if I got back into it, I'd remember more, but <laughs> haven't remembered as well as I was hoping. I like that part right there, I didn't know until I saw it in that note. Um, okay, can, they can be both. I didn't know that. Let's see. Okay, this is straight up information on it, but of course you're really going to be in a server, okay. Name server zones, here's an explanation about zones. I have a zone file uh, for my bishop code biz. let's see. Yeah, okay, bind consists of DNS related programs that contains a name server called named administration utility called RNDC and a debugging tool called dig okay so it doesn't look like there's much to it now there's two things I've seen in those in videos I say you need to install named and another program it wasn't RNDC I don't think and some of them one of them said just put showed you how to put named like DNS uh, install named and then put an asterisk after it and it would install everything to do with named. Uh, <clears throat> I don't believe it meant to install the named group but uh, everything to do with name and that all oh, that brings me back to I could find out more about it by using those group uh, programs to search for groups and see what all's in there not programs but commands <clears throat> and that's probably what I should do before I keep editing, I've edited, you know, editing and editing my config files. I think everything is up and running as it sh as it should be the way it's installed. Now I'm just now really hitting me again. Maybe I don't have everything installed right. Okay, now let's see what this page has to say around. This is the first mention of authority. Okay, types of DNS servers. What's up above that? Types of DNS queries. Okay, referrals. DNS queries. Okay, let's start with the types of DNS queries. Recursive DNS server will provide a full answer to the following referrals. Iterative, I remember that word. Non-recursive, the DNS server first checks its cache. If the query cannot be resolved, a referral is sent to the resolver on your local system. Most local resolvers are stub resolvers, which mean they can uh, not follow referrals. Therefore, you should have least one name server in etc resolve config that can provide recursive queries inverse inverse queries map resource record to a domain what is this that's the weak boy that's the serious complicated stuff in it let's see <clears throat> types of uh, DNS servers many different types oh the following list okay master holds his own files for the domain it is a it is authority, okay, for DNS, that's where it, authority for, oh, for the, holds zone files for the domain, it is authority for, authoritative, actually, I guess I should say authoritative, like tater, tater tot, but it is not authoritative, like I just saw in all the different spellings, 
Uh, DNS is not owned by one central organization. Instead, authority is delegated so that everyone running a domain or zone has control over their DNS. Okay, this is the way I thought it was. You can anybody can set up a DNS server <clears throat> because you need it to point everybody to your domain name, uh, whether your IP changes like is dynamic and changes like mine or not. So uh, if you're going to run your own web server and set the whole thing up to work, other uh, and other than you know using forwarding services like I've been doing or uh, paying you know GoDaddy or somebody to send it by, for their you know if you're going to if this you I don't even know if they offer that service for sure I think maybe they do and it's ex pretty expensive you might, it's just dang near half or more, three quarters of what it costs to just rent a server from them you know lease a server space from them um, I looked into it before of uh, having them point my domains to my you know a dynamic dynamic forwarding service that they would you pay them for of course they don't do things for free uh, they don't do anything that way, you know. Other than when you get a few little free things, like you get a, when you get a domain name, you do get a few pages for a website that uh, wouldn't work for me because I because I share my MP3 files and that's not something they allow. <clears throat> but uh, I mess with them. But it takes their their builders are slow and a pain in the butt to use them to me. And uh, uh, they're not. There's nothing wrong with them, really. It's just I don't care for them. It's like a wizard style, and you can't just go in there and edit a page. You got to go this next, this next, this next, this next. You know, and it just takes forever. It's good for somebody that doesn't have a clue of how to make a web page. You know, <clears throat> but uh, it aggravates me. So anyway, um, now that slave. Okay, download zone information from a master DNS server. Okay, downloads zone information from a master DNS server. Slave. Servers will reply with an authoritative answer as long as the information was not from cache. Okay, advertising only services serves information for the zones it is authoritative for. Okay, does not provide recursive queries. An advertising server will not be able to resolve any queries outside the domain. It, this is what I want. This is what I'm trying to build right here. So I need to be building an advertising. DNS server, okay. Cache only uses a root hints zone file and provides recursive queries. The cache only server does not hold authoritative information or server. Okay. That that's what I'm trying to do. So. Let's change that one word and I'll put it in here. Now, let's see. I, I might need to say like setup. That that was good though. These searches are good because uh, it it's explaining some of the stuff. I there's even more, uh, even way more to it than what I saw in those videos. Uh, See, there, there was the only uh, things I've heard of in the videos was master, slave, and well, I learned about the caching, you know, uh, recursive caching servers, what they call what, what I've got installed here. That's what, it, that's what all of its basic set, its, its default setup was for, and then you're supposed to fill in. Really, all you have to do is fill in, know where to fill in your your uh, your domain names and all that, or or your local host machine name or whatever, you know, and get it working well there's a lot to it and we saw that in the last five six videos but <clears throat> um, okay let's see what they bind name uh, and this guy bind and name are the same thing okay yeah they generally do that everybody generally says the same the actual daemon providing the DNS service is called named okay these two terms will be used interchangeably throughout this guide okay client Oh, this is telling you exactly how to do it. This can be good. Okay, I'm trying to get down to <coughs> installing bind. They just say yum install bind. This is old enough they're not saying DNS. Okay, that could make some differences. DNS and bind. Bind. I'm going to kind of go through real quick and see 
what they got in here. It's, now that it says yum, I don't think I would follow it step by step because if it doesn't have DNS in there, then it's there's going to be new newer changes. They change things all the time in Fedora. So you always one thing you got to always know DNS bind. Okay, <coughs> DNS and bind. Oh, starting testing. Okay, go back to the top, and I'm gonna start looking for advertising. <coughs> yeah I don't want um, a master I didn't see I, I knew I didn't want a master because I'm not trying to tell the whole internet where all the websites are I just want to tell the internet where my websites are <coughs> Let's see, run dedicated servers and internal advertising and external server capable of resolving queries outside of your domain. Use allow transfer IP address and name config to restrict zone transfers to only specified servers. Do not forget to restrict zone transfers for both master and slave servers. Oh, these are security considerations. <coughs> okay. Oh, I hit. Oh, I hit enter again. Okay. By accident. Separate cache and DNS functionality. Recursion, no. Name config will disable caching if caching must be done on the same server. Restrict who can perform caching queries by allow recursion subnet. Oh. oh okay and name config allowing recursive let's keep let's go look at our name config while we're okay well, this is already open <coughs> okay so I'm used to clicking different windows so I keep clicking the wrong thing okay so it says capable of resolving outside of your domain use allow transfer Allow transfer IP address. Allow transfer. Where is that? I remember allow transfer. Let's go back to the top, work our way down then. Yeah, this is all notes up here. No, it's not all notes. It's got this right here. Listen on port 53. I put none on uh, IPv6 because they all suggested you don't really need that. Just put none. And then allow query. Okay. Now I've got it to my router because <clears throat> that's the only thing that makes sense to me. Uh, and I know somewhere it says allow transfer. Maybe it has to be in the zone file because I'm not seeing it. Recursion, no. DNS sec, and I think that was done by default for yes. And then, head, key file. That's something else there. <coughs> That's just telling you go to Fedora. That's actually telling you probably to go where I'm at, you think. Crypto policy, oh, okay. It's the it's is the wiki though for door wiki that where I'm finally at. I didn't ever just go there. Well, I did. It wasn't pertaining to what I was wanting to know, so I didn't think. I didn't. Well, I just didn't think. I didn't think it'd be a good good place to go. Okay, so. And then my zone file. Just cut up this zone. So let's go over here to this side. Evidently. Let's see, var name, yeah, var name, zone. Okay. Not a lot in there. Oh, yeah, I forgot it didn't have much in it. What file is it that has allow transfer in it? 
I wonder if I missed it just now or what. Okay, well, let's just kind of go back to getting the overall view then. I'll have to go. It said, I thought we were talking about the name config file. That's why I thought, well, I've got it open. Let's go look at it. It does, name config. So maybe I need to add allow transfer. <clears throat> go back over there and look again. Name config. I'll just use the edit mode. Oh, you can actually kind of read things better in the edit mode anyway. It's color coded. Oh, you can search in here. Uh, isn't there? A, yeah, search F7. Ah. Can't do it that way. Oh, that did work. I don't know why I got that note. <clears throat> okay, I want to find transfer. Nothing found. So it wasn't just me not being able to see it. It's not in there. Allow query. You know, I think I saw, must have saw that in another file. So maybe I need to add allow transfer line in there. I'm not going to just try things yet. I made a screenshot of that. I'm going to do that. Make another screenshot. So maybe it'll help me remember. This is actually security considerations. So. Okay. And. Uh, Cursion. No. <clears throat> Allow recursion subnet in the name config. Oh, okay. Let's read this again. Let's see. Recursion no. And name will uh, disallow caching if caching must be done on the same server. Restrict who can perform recursive caching queries by using allow recursion subnet in name config allowing recursive queries from everyone increases the chances of dns cache poisoning this is good reason to run dedicated servers this avoids the entire dns system being brought down because of one poison cache okay so i don't want to run a, you know a caching uh dns server anyway Unless I really need to. As a matter of fact, my router can had one has one built in, and I could turn it back on. Maybe uh, I just was af I turned it off because I was afraid that it would fight me getting this to work. You know, but maybe it sounds like maybe I could run. I could just turn that back on in my router, and it could be my caching recursive name server. <clears throat> it was already on for ever since I got the router. That's for some reason I thought it needed to be on, and it was on. <clears throat> that it was a default and I never changed it. <clears throat> um, I kind of think I turned it on in the because it's in the dynamic DNS section and I think I thought it, I was trying to get that to work. I tried that again today before I started my video and I still didn't get that working. The dynamic uh, DNS for, to, to automatically send my new IP address to uh, DNS freeDNS.org dot, dot afraid .org. Okay, now strict who can query your DNS server. Allow query subnet. Oh, I see. Okay, but I don't. I want the internet to be able to see my. And then here's firewall stuff. Okay. Except. Better read some of that. Okay, allow allow UDP and TCP and TCP. UDP and TCP, UDP is used to almost all queries, but queries larger than 5 kilobytes and zone transfers require TCP. Oh, that's the reason. Depending on uh, information you are serving or whether or not you are allowing zone transfers, you can get away with only allowing UDP port 53. Allow TCP port 953 for RNDC, and of course allow traffic on the loopback low interface. That's the 127. 
The following is an IP tables examples for a machine with only ETHO network. And they don't use ETHO anymore. I don't know why they changed it, but for some reason they changed how they labeled it. See, well, the, there's always the uh, virtual in Fedora, the newer Fedora versions, but they call it, uh, yeah, well, no, that's the driver. Let's see. There it is. ENO01. ENO1. So, I mean, if I wanted to do that, I could change ETHO to ENO1. It should be good. But uh, got to notice, gotta notice that. <clears throat> Again, this is older instructions. Okay. Yeah, I got to remember that. So I better not pour over this too much before I. That's a, almost the end of the page there. So I was going to hit, I'll do it again, advertising and see, but you might wrap around to the top. I, I might have been, I didn't start in any particular place. I just started. Okay, so that's good information, really good information there for uh, the. Okay, now advertising only serves information on zone. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, and this is where I was. So that's all there is on that page. I was going to close that, but I think I'll leave it open. I might actually want to do that here in a minute. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's see if we can find something about advertising on here. No, nothing about advertising. Okay. Now, let's see if I can search. I don't think there's a search mechanism. Yeah, there's no search mechanism in this. This is actually the older Fedora documentation uh, page. So... Advertising DNS name server. Okay, did I go? I, didn't, I haven't gone to the server world link yet, have I? Okay. Let's go there. Ah, I've been to this page before. This is about join Windows Active Directory with real MD. Oh, I think that's just... Oh, yeah, that is something they have at the top of all their pages. I thought, oh, that page is no good. I don't want nothing to do with Windows. That's just like advertisement for another article. <coughs> Excuse me. That says Windows Server 2016 right there, though. Unless that's what they're working in, but see, you know, right here? It says DNF, why install? Realm, SSD, Samba. No, this is to that. This is about joining Windows Server Active Directory, but you're doing it in Fedora or Red Hat. <clears throat> DNF to be for Fedora, Red Hat, or perhaps CentOS. Uh, the new ver newer versions, I guess, are using DNF. So I want to see what. Advertise, advertising is not even on that page. Sometimes that happens. Okay. And I had my search is for Fedora 28. And Fedora 22, an active directory. So I guess, um, here we go. Set up. That's what I'm going to try now. Okay, we'll make it all. Instead, I was fixing to go try to make everything all properly <laughs> capitalized, but let's don't go through that much trouble. Okay, now that 28, set up advertising name server. Now, that brings us back to server world again, a page I've already been to before. Might not be the one I just now went to, though. It was. <coughs> I uh, don't know. I mean, how can it be about that if that word's not even on that page? It may be because of the way this page is made, and it's somewhere on this website, but not on that page, and that makes it really hard to find stuff. Yeah, that server world is not. Reddit. I never have found. I never go to that site. It's usually just a bunch of. It seems to me that it's mostly just a bunch of jumbled up mess. Well, it's not got anything to do with this, doesn't seem. 
joining Active Directory. For so for some reason, the word advertising gets me. And it's resolvable using network manager. It's all about Samba, which is the uh, way that Linux networks with Windows networks, Samba. SMB networks. Usually just call them SMB networks for short. I do. All right, let's see. Advertising. Nothing about advertising. When you don't want to find advertising, it's always there <laughs> in real actual advertising. But when you want to find the word advertising, can't find it. Save your life. Well, I don't know. I, that's that's a tech, super tech talk. <clears throat> when they start using words like lawyers, I'm not going to try to sift through that. Uh, contextualizing okay how to set up a DNS resolver now I saw that and then let's see what um, resolve conflict yeah we're off on a uh, wild goose chase it's hard to say let's look for videos but I can't do that uh, while I'm in my video <coughs> I can't watch them Besides, it really takes a long time to watch videos. Samba. Okay. I'm going to copy all that so I don't lose it. I'm going to close my Google search. Now let's go. This wiki have a search? Yeah, the wiki here has a search in it, so... Let's try it. Nothing came up. There's one thing. This looks like a bug or something. Let's find out. Ooh. Let's see. And a Fedora art list for web banner. Oh, this is about actual advertising. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa. Let's try that. Set up advertising. Same thing. Let's try that. No, let's. Can I undo? No, you can't undo. Paste and search. Now, how do I configure Active Directory? Set up advertising DNS server, name server. Okay, now that looks like maybe we got a little bit different results. Maybe. Still, I still have Windows logo down there, so let's see, maybe. <clears throat> yeah, sometimes that uh, I do know there are other uh, DNS server uh, programs you can run, uh, but right now I, I want to stick with the one I got. If I I feel like I had it close to being set up, but I could be completely wrong. What? Y G L I N Setting up a DNS name server. I don't know. This might be a good article, but but it's does wired. A oh, wired magazine is usually full of fluff and puff and no real down. I don't care what it is they're reporting on. There's no real nitty gritty. Let's get get something real built kind of articles. So their videos are silly. So <clears throat> maybe they were good years ago because I know they've been around a long time. Just the other day I saw 
video with a couple of actresses, English actresses, and uh, from Wired. And I thought, what are they doing on a Wired video? And I thought, okay, well, sometimes I like Wired videos. I do sometimes. <clears throat> and uh, one of the actors. I can't remember her name, but anyway, she, she's good, and I enjoyed her in some movies. And the other one, I didn't know who she was, and she's a young. And so I watched it, and it was like 15, 16 minutes or so of just them, all they were doing. It had nothing to do with tech, you know, nothing wired, <laughs> nothing electronics. It's usually something electronics, or actually, they get off into all kinds of things, like how to turn a coat hanger into a TV antenna or something. Something everybody's known since they were born. But... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, they were just answering questions about themselves. Cute little puff, puff piece. So, uh, and I just kept, I just sat there and watched it because I want. well, after it got going, I wanted to see what they're going to answer. And of course it was all really not, all, it was silly. You know, it was just like the uh, cute answers. No, no real answers to any real questions or anything. So anyway, and I don't watch junk like that on purpose. So I was kind of pissed that, I got tricked into watching a silly, you know, like Entertainment Tonight type video on the internet when I was l wanting to look at something about tech. Wired magazine, right? Okay, so anyway, there you go. That's why I say that. Damn that. I mean, that's really what cemented it just the other day. I was like, you know, for years I've been going, man, that, that used to, years ago, probably, I don't know how many years ago, they had some pretty, you know, they weren't, like I said, they weren't in depth, but they had some good projects and stuff to watch. I don't know what they're doing now. Every time I see anything, I, it's just silliness to me. <clears throat> okay. Um, install Active Directory Windows. Oh, well, these are videos again. So evidently, the word when I put the word advertising in there, it just gets me to Windows Active Directory stuff. Okay, set up. I'll go back to my links so that I can find the ones I just did because they were evidently closer to what I'm looking for. Okay, Fedora 28. Let's go back to the authoritative name server. Okay. This time let's put authoritative DNS. Ah, and put advertising, whoops, advertising name server. Door 28, authority of DNS. Authority of DNS advertising name server. <clears throat> now, will that change my results any? Probably save that too soon. Managing DNS forwarding. How to configure bond as an authoritative DNS only. This is what I may want. Yes. Managing that might be good too. Let's open it right now. I'll forget sometimes. Okay. Even though the title might not have sounded like what I was. Affects DNS queries. Now see if the, no advertising is not in there. Okay. See if this one has that in there. Nope. <clears throat> well, that one, oh, that's on Ubuntu. So that's going to be useless to me. Absolutely useless. All right. I'm going to put this, save this one because uh, it might be useful even if it's not exactly what I'm looking for. There's authoritative. Okay. I'm going to start searching for that word here in a second. As soon as I get the comma out of there. This does not look like it's a how-to, though. This is one. Yeah, it does have examples right there at the bottom. Okay, by default, bond does not forward queries to another server if the query in this block to zone. Okay. <clears throat> I 
Oh, and by the way, it may be the reason I never could get, <clears throat> I'm thinking that probably the reason I never could get, uh, I always got to, oh, let's get out of this program and I'll show you what I mean. Yeah, NS lookup, and, and if I do the local and I get, uh, can't be found, Probably because I don't have a list of local <clears throat> IPs that are allowed to do a query on this DNS server. Uh, especially, uh, I think that's probably it. Because uh, everywhere I run into, I see that as a requirement. So, uh, and I didn't do it. I thought I had it set up to allow any, you know, on the named uh, config, it says any. But that might not have worked the way I thought it did. <clears throat> that's what I'm thinking. So... Global forwarder. This is not a Florida. So far, it's all not authoritative. Okay. X query. Recursive. Okay. Let me try to. DNS forwarding affects how DNS require queries are answered. By de default, the bind service integrated with IDM is configured to act as both an authoritative and recursive DNS server. Okay, but we are reading about Red Hat. Now, this could be different than Fedora. Uh, my Fedora name config told me it was, this is only a recursive server, <coughs> and I'm trying to change the settings to make it both. Uh, when the... DNS client queries a name belonging to a DNS zone for which the IDM, I don't know what IDM is, but the server is authoritative. Binary replies with data contained in the configured zone. Authoritative data always takes precedence over <coughs> other data. <coughs> So if you didn't believe me that it's complicated, that it's just complicated in my little old brain, well, this this part of this, if you're watching, any, if you just skip through this video and see how much you run into about all this, it's even three times more than what I've ran into because I was just focusing on trying to get it set up and running and I was just watching the videos and reading the few sites I looked through of get this up and running. Well, this is the ins and outs of how I didn't even realize there was so many now I realize that when they talk about the basics of DNS servers, uh, the named, you know, the bind DNS server can be configured in all these different ways. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so I guess the back end is bind a lot of a lot of the times. I know that uh, I think it was the original, the Berkeley Internet uh, name server, whatever. I forgot all the words to that, but. <clears throat> I think it might have been the original. Well, I don't know if it's the original. Original, you know, there's stuff like from the beginning of computing. But anyway, it, it's the one that took on the biggest and made a big impact. Still being used today. Now here's doing this in a good GUI. Oh, how cool is that? This is in Red Hat, <clears throat> so I, I've never used Red Hat. I've never. I'm thinking about trying it out at some point because you can now. Uh, you can join a developer group or something, and then team or whatever, and, uh, uh, and then they'll let you download it and use it. Uh, started to go and do it that day when I found it, but I thought, you know, that's a whole new can of worms to learn about. So <laughs> I think I'll wait.
because I knew I needed to redo this server and I didn't want to try it on the one that's going to be online. I wanted to just do what I know how to do. You know? So what did I do? I turned around and decided to try to set up a DNS server instead of just getting it up and going. But it, I've been having so much trouble. Um, the reason I keep on trying every day is every day I had a bunch, I had all kinds of emails saying server was up and uh, me. I eat, you know, my different domain names were up and down for a few minutes from anywhere from under a minute to three hours just today and last night. Uh, the last two days um, and and when I do go sometimes they don't show to be let's see if they're even up I, I was messing around with trying to get that DNS forwarding okay bishopco.biz.com I'll just do that one okay it looks like it's down again Dad, gum it. it's not coming in right away that usually means it's down now dot biz I bet it'll, it'll go instantly goes instantly because it's not forwarded I've got it going straight to my public IP. Now, I figured something out just a while ago. Um, I meant to do this before I even started my video and I forgot. Um, go to my subdomains and it makes you log in. Oh. Um, I always, I don't know. Let's, let's just go to the blurry camera in case I accidentally hit the wrong thing. Oh, I just changed the password a while ago <clears throat> because I got to thinking, well, now I can't remember it. Because I got to thinking, what if somebody had broken the password and that is what's going on with it, you know? Okay, I've got, now if I can remember it long enough to log in. <laughs> See, um, oh, okay. Now, hopefully, it'll. Okay, so, uh, oh, it's got some crazy. Yeah, I can show this page. It's got some crazy um, IP address, and I know how I, I did that to it, though. <clears throat> um, and. Uh, Instead of manually doing it this time, yeah, that's still good. The last IP is still good because bishopco.biz is, is still good. So I'm going to go, let's see. I don't know if I should show that or not. Uh, you can go over here. On, well, I'm still on the camera. I went to my, this is one reason why when I'm really thinking hard, I switch wrong. I do things wrong. I'm showing myself. I know you wouldn't see any of it, would you? <laughs> Uh, this is blurry enough. I'm sure you can't see what I'm doing here. So let me go to that page and see. I'm going to go to dynamic DNS. And then the settings, you can change them to a whole bunch of different ways. Oh, it shows the IP it's going to right there. And uh, <clears throat> currently linked on. And how did I? Anyway, I was trying to use set up and now I'm not even seeing the page that I was on before I don't know what I was doing but uh, I was trying to use um, right now you have direct URL we get script curl script curl script and hmm I'm going to go to my links that I made while I was doing that and see. There it is. What page am I on? I don't know how I got to this page, but there's a page. <clears throat> and, uh, yeah, it shows all kinds of stuff that I'm not sure. Huh. 
It puts the wrong uh, IP address in there for some reason. And uh, I didn't even notice that. Now I see that. The different options I tried. I was trying to make my router work. And so I was trying to use username. There's username and password in line and then just username and password. And each one gives you a different URL to use. But the IP is wrong. And so <clears throat> I clicked the boxes. This is Vision Code. Yeah, yeah, I clicked. So anyway, it didn't work in my router. It, it, my router wouldn't take it no matter which one I picked. But it's using the wrong IP. I don't know what that IP is or where it's coming from. So I just need to go. Okay, so I'll just have to go to subdomains and uh, put the right one in there. I'll just, just do it because I don't know what... Uh, Okay, <clears throat> now I'm going to close that page. I probably could have shown most of all that. This is what we're, this is basically the, the subdomains, and then you click on your domain and you get a page where you can edit it. So I don't want to do that because I just did it. So now let's see. <clears throat> See, I don't have my email open, so I'll go to bishopco.com, which forwards this there in, instantly, bishopco.us.2. And like I was saying a minute ago, bishopco.biz is working perfectly, and, the, and it does even when my forwarding's not. Now, so my forwarding is going up and down, up and down, up and down. I don't know why. Uh, my IP address hasn't changed. So, but I have no clue now for sure what's going on with that because when I just now went back there, the uh, the um, crazy IP address that I have no clue where it came from was in there. And I just, you know, I changed my password just a little an hour or two ago, so it's not somebody doing that, I don't believe. And the other day, I didn't do it just now. Um, I was just trying to hurry up and get it fixed. But <clears throat> the other day, I went and tried to follow that IP. I guess what I should do is trace it in Zen Map. I just tried to go to it, and it didn't come up. Which wasn't smart. What if it was something nefarious, you know? Uh, somebody That's what you would expect somebody to do is try to forward your, uh, change your forwarding to some nefarious website so that everybody that goes to your website gets viruses or something, you know? But nothing happened. It just didn't load. I didn't get a, <clears throat> didn't get anything. So still that's not uh, conclusive that, I, you know, I should have went ahead and, but I'm, I don't want to fiddle with it right now. I'm trying to do DNS, so. I got my website. My, but anyway, if I went into my email, I'd be having all these notices now that it's been down again. This time it was my fault. Be, before, I don't know what's been going on. So I'll leave it as it is uh, with the right IP in there. There's one thing I left. You know what? <clears throat> I kept thinking. I kept seeing it and thinking. Um, subdomain. No, that's not it. This page here, I think this is okay to go to. Okay, this is the page I was talking about with all the settings and the different. This is version two of the dynamic update interface. Oh, that's why I didn't see it, find it easily. And it's all these different options of what you can do. Now, it says uh, enable dynamic DNS. You can disable it. So that's what I'm going to do because that might be what's breaking it. Could be... It may be, it's not, it's not set right and it's not working right and it keeps every, you know what, every few hours it's trying to update it and it, it's doing it, but to some whatever IP I have no clue, you know, so that's probably exactly what's wrong. I need to keep that off unless I figure out how to make it work. It will work. I remember this now. I used to have a, an update app uh, installed, application, software not phone app installed on my old uh, Dell server, the 400 megahertz server. 
and it worked just fine but once in a while for some reason I don't know why it would uh, give out its local IP address instead of the IP address of my router and so then it would be broken and so that's so that's the other problem with so if you if you can't get your router to do it ever since uh <clears throat> see my Linksys router would do it and I had a couple other routers that would do it uh, with Dyn <clears throat> and this one this router here it has um, I think I can yeah I can go to it I think and show it let's see this router here this D link <clears throat> um, where did it go I just saw that model number when it there it is that's what I got if I can get it to I can't get the highlight right there now if I go to features and go to dynamic DNS I got it turned off I can't get it I've never I've never been able to successfully save any settings I've put in there so um, and I was trying to send it to Bishop Cardot US.2 and I had my um, had a, a username put in there uh, and uh, Anyway, you can do uh, D-Link DNS. You can buy it from them. It's not free. Dying DNS, which is not free anymore, and then you can do manual. That's all it supports. Well, I don't care what I've tried putting in there. I haven't been able to get it to work. So um, go home and then go back and make sure it's not trying to turn itself on or anything and have the wrong thing in there. <clears throat> but I've never had it. Uh, at one point, I guess I put something in there. You saw that I still have information in there. At one point, um, it did save some settings, but they didn't work. So, um, yeah, if I leave it off, no, no, okay, maybe that was the answer to my my problem there. Uh, I did, ha I probably left that free DNS uh, forwarding, uh, I mean, dynamic DNS notification, changes notification turned on, but it wasn't working right. I, I didn't understand how to do it or something wasn't working right and uh, <clears throat> it was giving out a I guess that's why I'm getting those weird random IP addresses they're coming from something along its chain uh, it's not set to point to my server right evidently or, well it's not pointing well it's pointing to my server right but the the DNS uh, dynamic DNS re, uh, update renewal thing it's not working right <clears throat> okay so I turned it off so now maybe it'll quit going down up and down up and down up What's crazy is it would go up and down all the time. It would be down, then up, down, you know, up, then down. So I don't know, but now I turn it off, so maybe that'll, maybe that'll stop all that. I hope, let's hope so. Okay, so um, back to, yeah, I know I'm crazy I'm going in circles. Back to where I was at. <clears throat> global forwarder. Now I don't really know what a global forwarder is, but I stopped because I saw that graphic user interface global configuration yeah I don't have this app <clears throat> and I don't think I did, couldn't find the old, old one I uh, I don't know what app they're using here click the network services tab yeah this is this must be like the industrial version of this app right here that comes with I've seen some <clears throat> that's not it <clears throat> um, don't want to disconnect you have to go to network let's see if it comes up by doing that Proxy program. I don't do proxy, so let's see if that's edit the connection. Okay, now here's the app that you get with it. Maybe Ethernet <clears throat> general. I generally use the defaults. I have done different things with this before on, on the while on my IBM server I set up a I tried to set it up <clears throat> as a like a internet appliance I used the firewall that comes with Fedora and I, ha I wanted to have the router coming to it and then an, another Ethernet card going out to my to my, I mean the modem going to one card coming in from the internet another Ethernet card 
was put, went out to my routers uh, so that all my traffic was would be filtered and protected through that firewall. And, and then, but my server would be connected to the uh, modem and go straight online. <clears throat> but uh, I had problems with the hardware not doing right. I, I was able to set up all that to work, the in and out part, but the hardware was going crazy, and I kept my IP address kept changing all the time. I forget what all was going on, but anyway. Yeah, see, this is not the same settings uh, see. yeah there's no uh, <clears throat> do look for network again just to make sure but yeah he, these are you know like ether ape you can see your net what's going on in your network where, where everything's going network lo uh, log viewer this can be useful Images from a robot. Yeah, I want to learn about ro robotics some someday. One day, <clears throat> I want to play with some of the programs. I haven't done it. Connections, proxy, Wireshark uh, is another one. Traffic analyzer. It's a real good app, and uh, it's like uh, Air. What's the other one? Air Crack or Air Gap? Yeah, Air Crack. I think it's called for wireless. This is for wired. And network proxy, <clears throat> which is not to help in it. That's just if you want to use a proxy instead of your normal setup. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm just, if I could see the name of that app. Oh, this is the web UI. Okay. So that's why they have a graphic interface because <clears throat> they've got a web. Now, see, if I could get web UI. Web UI. Oh, IDM Web UI. I bet you can't do that in Fedora. I bet you have to. I bet you can only get that in. Uh, let's find out. You can probably only get that in <coughs> Red Red Hat. <coughs> now, once this thing gets done loading, <coughs> we'll see. We can find that it has to finish loading so that one while ago i was saying what is uh what is i don't know what idm the weird uh, yeah idm okay is the way with the small you know large letters uh, caps and small letters mixed together it makes it look really weird and noticeable though okay Forwarding zones. I think I'm gonna leave it there. I'll lose my place completely. Um, so I wasn't finished loading yet. <clears throat> Spray to that. Okay. Um, I do have. I'm always complaining about DNF. There is something that that I have on here. There's one, so I'm not going to open it because it will, I don't think that's it either. Add remove. I don't think that's the one I'm thinking of. I may have two others besides DNF on here. Yeah, I don't see another one. Okay, there's one called software and I remember it and I think it's different than what I was fixing to say. Uh, Apper. Yeah, there's one called software and then there's one called Apper. I used Apper the other day to install something and it did work. But it doesn't work perfectly. It's not working great on newer versions of Fedora. And all the little fields don't even show up right. <clears throat> but it does work. So in names, let's do descriptions because it's not going to show up in names. Nope. Let's just try IDM. <clears throat> I just thought might be a lot of things with IDM in it. Yeah, IDM. I 
IDM console framework. The Java management console framework used to remote server management. Okay. <clears throat> so maybe I can... Uh, well, that's part of port 389. I always wanted to install the 389 web server. I never got it. Never did it. I thought it had a lot of good features. Let's see. Key feature. Zero downtime. LDAP. LDAP. Class, class, open source, LDB, oh, LDAP service, server for Linux. Yeah, 389 directory server. I always wanted to try that out, but it was really, you had to set it up yourself and it was complicated. Okay, so that's just the, yeah, okay. So that's just the stuff about the whole server. But what I'm wondering is, will it work? <clears throat> if I can install that and use it, that might be the GUI I've been hope, wishing for, what I was thinking. So that didn't tell you, it's not IDM, that's... Uh, <coughs> see, there's a lot more that comes, comes up, though, under this search. But they don't look like, well, package link IDM. Could be a different kind of IDM though. It looks to me like the only thing that's actually IDM, now I won't have to install it on here. Um, I would have to just do DNF install IDM on the server. I, I, I gotta be careful, I don't have but like two and a half gig of space on the server, so I don't wanna just install things that are big, you know, take up a lot of space. Okay. By editing the name config, manually editing the ETC name config on every ID in this allows using a different global forward policy. This could help me because it will use probably tell me when I'm messing up. What I'm wondering is can I install It didn't tell you how to install IDM. Well, what can we do? <clears throat> I'll tell you what. I was talking about doing that group, using my the group commands earlier. <clears throat> group list. Well, let's see. There, yeah, group list commands is what I'm thinking. Well, let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Dora. There we go. DNF scripts and so on. Group list commands. There we go. List commands, terminal output, all with numbers. Okay. Okay, and then let's just open that one. I got a feeling that way. That top one was the script I built. DNF list installed. That's different. That's not a group list. Okay. If I double click on that script, it could even run. Okay, here we go. Home done documents install scripts. Oh, this is my script. Think it's when I ran my script. Yeah, yeah that's me running the script. <clears throat> I was getting to the right directory. Yeah. So that's the output of me running my script. Well, I want to see how to where I used to build. This is something that's good though. List DNF list installed. Oh, that's telling. Oh, that's the command to put a list of all of your applications in a temp file. Okay, that's a different thing. Group list. 
Jesus. Yeah, this might be it. Went to a different place on me. No, I think this is running that script again. Yep. Okay. Oh, terminal output, DNF group info. That's what we want. VMware. Yeah, someone say I ran. I just saved a text file for every one of those that I ran in case I wanted to look at those individually. Here we go. <coughs> Let's see. Enough update, install RPM Fusion and all that stuff. This is, oh, this is another script, another script. Just isn't in, uh, it's not a script, it's just preparing to build one. Group list commands. Ah, now maybe this is it. DNF group list, okay. And then uh, available, and then you can uh, group info, genome. <coughs> yeah, this is what I'm need. Follow. And this is me actually running it, so. Running the different commands. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't need to list all the groups. I need to get group info. So group DNF group info. Okay. And IDM. Let's see if that'll work. <clears throat> IDM's not a not a group, it's just a single app, but may, well we'll see. It's running. Uh, could be just gonna come back and say got an error, but Yeah, it does not exist. Okay, so um, see, I can't remember. I know there's a grep, you know, to find out all about an app and stuff. Let's do. See, it could be hidden. NF group list be hidden. Oh, that's group list. Let's do it anyway. It might help. If I get all the groups in the window, I might be able to search through the window. <clears throat> it's going to give us a pretty long output, I think. But um, if I can search inside of this window, I think I might be able to go here and do it up here. My <clears throat> keyboard shortcuts don't quite work right. <coughs> They want to go to the terminal instead of to the browser or the other way around, I've noticed. It just kind of depends. I guess it depends on which one has to. <laughs> All right. Now, let's see. Yeah, if I hit Control F, it does nothing in the terminal. So, let's try hitting it. Finding this page. Now, then. Now, I've, I guess I can go over here to copy that. I've lost the... Uh, name of that program now it's up here somewhere I didn't go too far yeah I IDM IDM now I might have to do it no I don't think it'll matter if it's
Yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, can't remember how to find these things. Language groups. I'll just go through some of the groups. Available groups. 3D printing. Yeah, see, there's a long list of things. That's why I wasn't going to try to read through them. It's not as long as I was thinking. These are the hidden groups, uh, by the way, not the normal everyday groups. I could have just done DNF group list. I guess there's not a group, well, which may be a good thing. Uh, yeah, works. Uh, this is where I would find out what commands to use to install, uh, like say if I wanted XFC desktop or something. Development, web server environment, I've already got that. Could do DNF group list bind. Let's see, what was it? Oh, well, you can. Anyway, <clears throat> there's a lot of a lot of other good groups. Some of the best stuff I found was in the V Hidden groups. So I'm not going to go through those now. Group info bind. That's one thing I've been. This is the, the reason I, w I originally wanted to run the command. I wanted to see if there was a lot of <clears throat> things to do with the bind. Uh, the DNF ser DNS server. So um, we'll find out. That does not exist. Okay. Now then, I'm just going to try installing IDN. Okay. Try that way. You couldn't use the capitals. It was crazy. Sometimes you have to. <clears throat> Sometimes you can't. Looks like it's maybe well, I don't know, we'll see. Look, see if it's gonna come up with anything. You still, just because you see that made a data expiration check doesn't mean that that you're still gonna find anything, you know, other than uh, not found. Yeah. So IDM's not available in Fedora. It's available for Red Hat. So really reading uh DNF info bind. It's, it's something about grep, and you had to use that straight up and down line. I don't even know what you call it. Error not found. Okay, so. <clears throat> oh, yeah, it said. Uh, well, I don't want to do that. A DNF install bind with uh, asterisk. My, oh, wait. We did get something this time. Oh, group bind does not exist. Not exist. Okay. But it kept going DNF install ID. Oh, no. We're not down there yet. Where are we? Where are we? Are we? Okay. Info bind. Okay. Here we go. This is now I got something on that one. <coughs> uh, we've got bind. Oh, this is all about it. This is not about the, the you know, the uh, other packages. This is just bind. Okay. Berkeley Internet, dom Berkeley Internet domain name. Bind. DNS domain server. So there's our information on it. Uh, I just can't remember, and I don't know even where to look. <clears throat> I suppose I could do. Well, let's go ahead and try it right quick. Uh, Let's see. Somewhere I've been before. Trying to figure out where to put it. <clears throat> I want to put it in. Um, I think I have a folder for commands, Linux commands. But I don't see it. I guess I could do that. <clears throat> There. 
I, I, I don't have my all my old. I did not in, on purpose import all my old bookmarks, so I'm missing a lot of stuff. <clears throat> Yum DNF. Oh, Fedora Linux project. Where I got it. Let's put it in the commands terminal so that I'll find it again. I've been here before, so it must have been DNF install HTTPD. Assume yes. That'd be Y install. The Y slash Y on the end. Let's be manual. I think that might be a group. Or it could. Sometimes with a dash in there means it's a group. Sometimes it <coughs> just means it's a, that's the way they have you doing it. Available updates. Dash one. Download a file. <coughs> HTTPD is a, is actually a Apache web server, by the way. Uh, unbound. I don't remember what that is. But. And, uh, Remove, that's how you uninstall something. Reinstall and uh, repo list. Oh, yeah. That'll tell you what repos you have set up in your system. Repository list all. Add a new repository. That's something I need to learn how to use in my Fedora 14 system. <coughs> um, anyway, I won't go into that. Um, well, it's, the repos are not there anymore, but they are in our, for the world's archives, I just need to find, you know, point it, point them to the new addresses so they'll work again. That's what I think I could do. Disable. This is a long, I thought I was just going to flip through it. This is very long. Okay, search PHP. Uh, grep. There it is. When piped into the grep command, this becomes extremely powerful. It allows you to search for specific patches to see if it's specific package to see if it's installed. Say that right one time. DNF list installed grep HTTPD. That's what I want, but I want to make it, uh, you know, these other packages. Yeah, that's the only place they've got an example that so um, I forgot what was I wanted bind first I want to know about bind I know that <clears throat> that other thing is not installed okay now here's what I got with my package <laughs> this is what I got by clicking on install DNS server in the uh, door 28 uh, net installs okay. anaconda setup got bind ch root export libs 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 so i don't have python rpc bind so i don't have any there may be other things uh maybe i need some of these other things but like i said i don't have a lot of space so <clears throat> since i even saw that that's a acceptable way to do it this is what i'm talking about right here this is what i remember just like that um I I'm afraid I'll fill the machine up. And no telling what that might do to my installation that I've been working on all my config files and everything for too. So, I mean, it should just say already installed and up even running right now. So it would just skip those. But then again, I'm not, I don't want to break what I've got going. List available packages. Okay, now that might be something. I'm not sure WC1. Oh, that'd be all available packages? Let's hang on for that. Package groups, DNF group list. <clears throat> That's the regular group file, group, group command that I didn't even run. I don't want all the available packages. And then, then you can say group info, basic web server. But if I do the group list, then uh, 
I already looked for I already looked for that. Uh, oh well, I can see. <clears throat> oh yeah, there's no group bind and there's no group. Uh, where, where's my page? I've lost that page. I went off of it somehow. I guess I did it. Uh, I don't think I need any more of these commands. No, that was not it. I closed it, I guess, without thinking. I closed my page that I was going by. I'll have to find it again. <clears throat> that's why I put things in. Uh, <laughs> that's why I put things in my bookmarks as I go, because I tend to do things like that. Okay, so um, yeah, lots of groups. Not, well, not as many. See, so, that's just a basic group list. Available environments, back to desktops. And these are the ones that are installed. Administrative. C development, editors, headless management. I thought with the headless management, I might get some more things to <clears throat> besides just cockpit, you know, but I don't, if they're there, I don't know what they are. Uh, well, let's see. Development, RPM development tools, system tools, text based internet, window managers. That's all that's on here as far as groups now, not packages, but groups. Available groups, printing, authoring, cloud infrastructure, management, cloud management. This is actually useful. Well, I didn't think think it would be all that useful. Well, the hidden groups could be useful too. Electronics lab, IP, IPA server. Most of this, a lot of this is, most of that is graphic user interface stuff and not what I need on my server. And that other group, well, I, I didn't really look through it that. Here's the first one I ran. <coughs> um, Desktops, see, and I think there's some more desktops besides, yeah, than what was up in the other one. Looks like infrastructure, server infrastructure environment. Oh, infrastructure though, that's your I, that's your. Uh, I don't think it'd be anything for what I want. Well, DNS server, infrastructure is generally stuff to help you set up an ISP <coughs> server. I used to, I tried to do that before. I tried to set up a dial-up server years ago. But, uh, infrastructure. Well, I wouldn't know what I was going to, I was sitting there, oh, I'm going to install that, but again, I don't have a lot of space. I don't know what I would, and that might be graphic user stuff, some of it or all of it. But probably not. I'm going to bet that that is mostly command line stuff if not all <coughs> but yeah i mean dns server could be uh you know authoritative name server can be considered infrastructure and to me yeah i'm just guessing though aren't i ain't i administrative tools i have the dns name server that's what i did using the graphic user interface in anaconda or the net the fedora net install and FTP server, I did that too. That's why I can SFTP in there. And uh, headless management, I did that. I saw that. Network networking sub modules, network manager sub modules. Now that might be something there. I'll copy that. RPM development, Fedora. That might be something. Well. Of course, if it's graphic, well, these are modules. I don't know that they're necessarily graphic user stuff. Even you probably would let you install them, but you couldn't use them. <coughs> I don't think not without a real window, uh, window manager, a real, you know, like F XFCE would be the one I'd put on there, real desktop system, basic web server. Well, I've got that. Let's see. Then there's available groups. Those are installed groups. I've got all these. Everything here. See, I've got some special groups, so I've already got those. I do have a window manager. You gotta have a window manager just to even have a terminal, but now that I think about it. No wonder so many of them I recognized. <clears throat> Okay, now available groups, Anaconda tool, that's the installer. Ansible, 
I tried to learn Ansible. That is really cool, but very, it, uh, remote management, that's what it's all about. But it's very, very, very lots to learn. More, more, probably way more than this DNF server, I think. I don't know. Maybe not. You might be able to get up and running <laughs> easier than with the DNF server. I didn't, I, at the time, I couldn't think, I wasn't feeling good and couldn't think real straight a couple of years ago now, I guess. And I uh, just never felt like going back and trying it again. I just couldn't wrap my head around. It was nothing but editing config files to get it up and going. And I'm not, I, I, you may have figured out I'm not good at that if you watched a few of these, any, any a little bit of each one of these videos. Okay. Uh, maybe I'm, there are other people, maybe I'm better than some people, but I'm definitely not like these people that I see making, that are <laughs> making videos and they're good at it, are the people writing out this stuff. Bring publishing. I always say, I always think I'm not good at stuff because I'm not as good as the best, you know. So then maybe once in a while, if I talk to somebody or show them how to do something that I have learned, and they said, well, oh gosh, I can't do any of that, you know, or something like that. So we all, I don't know, I guess we, we go back and forth between thinking we're not good enough and thinking we're too good, you know, all the time. <clears throat> and some of us lean one way or the other more, obviously. Dial up networking. Yes, it's still there. So these are mostly just, uh, these are mostly your normal graphic user apps. You know, available language groups. Okay, so there we go. Now one time I tried to, I would kind of like to save all this. Let's see if I can before I get it's gonna end up going away at some point <laughs> yeah you can't use the home and in keys to see I'm gonna make a new text file here since I already have a text editor open it doesn't get it all when you copy and paste from that terminal you don't get oh yeah you do well it didn't get it all though it got oh it started at the top and then you quit along the way I did this the other day, and I s noticed that I didn't didn't get what I was wanting. So I'm not going to try it again. <clears throat> okay. Um, so there's really, I guess, not a way to save all, all that. <coughs> you can do that in pretty much any other terminal. Some of them just leave behind. A lot of them leave. After you get a whole bunch in there, it'll, leave, it'll just automatically delete, you know, the beginning of it all. Only so many characters allowed, you know, in it. <clears throat> but um, this one has got everything I did up for pretty far back, but it, I can't, for some crazy reason, I can't copy and paste it all. What's in there? Okay, group list, uh, DNF group list. Group install. Now, that's a group install command right there, see? That's what I would do if I like if there was a bind group and I was going to do it. I would do that only. I would say bind instead of web server, or whatever the command was for installing it. But there's not a bind <coughs> check update. This is a really good page. Just just write down the what's the most common stuff you need. You know, automatic. Oh. That's funny. Installing DNF automatic. <clears throat> oh, that may be something else. I was there's there's the whole project, you know, for door automatic. I don't know. I just don't get off onto the whole world of commands. Update info, install HTTPD. That's a really good page. <clears throat> okay, so maybe I'll be able to find it again because I put it in there. Terminal output page this time. Okay, yeah, the red hat. Okay, so that's uh, no matter how that's good good information, but you see all this stuff is specific to Red Hat server, and it's not. It's getting well. It's got me off on another track there. CentOS. Well, it, it's more akin to Red Hat than it is to Fedora. I, I've used. I've worked in. And that where the directories are can be different, <clears throat> and all kinds of things. So,
And okay, here's one. Install, configure, and maintain. I'm going to put it in my... I don't know if this is going to be about Fedora, but at all. It looks like it'll be about... just says Linux, so... <clears throat> ECC host file. That's one I haven't worked on at all, and that may be where why I can't. You know, that's in Windows system. That's in uh, well, it's not going to be in ETC, but it's in Fedora too, and in, in the bank. And uh, <clears throat> that might be where. Uh, That's going to be you bent to there. So anyway, I'm not going to go into that, but <clears throat> I was thinking that might be, no, that might not be where I need to put any of that stuff about allowed local. I think you put it in the name, the ETC name config, actually, the one allowed uh, IPs that can contact your DNS server. See this primary, secondary, caching zone. Got pretty much everything I've ran across. Stored of authority directory. Oh, yeah, SOA. That's what start SOA stands for. <coughs> A and AAA records. That's IPv4 and IPv6. <coughs> PTR pointer records. MX mail records, CNAME, conical name records, DNS time to live, <clears throat> caching. I don't know. I think, is it all on the same page or does it go to a different page? I think maybe it's, okay, nothing about advertising. How about? Authority record. Oh, SOA start of authority record. Yeah. I think this is going to be the same type of stuff I've already followed. Pipe master. Primary, secondary, cat. Yeah, I don't. Cache DNS servers. Okay. So this is not going to be about. <clears throat> This is already in my files, and I left the defaults in there, except for changing the IP. Uh, I mean, the change it to bishopco.biz. This part right here. And of course, I don't have any mail in mine. There may not be more than there may. So far today, what all I see when I go back and forth is I only see the. Name, uh, name config and the zone file. Of course, you have more than one zone file, but uh, let's see name config. Okay, okay. Um, anyway, I was thinking there was three or four different files you had to edit, but uh, I keep just going, going. And when I look through stuff, I keep going back to just two files, unless you want more than one zone file. Actually, you may really want to put every all your ser like all your separate websites in one zone file. I may have already messed up by making my bishop code out bit. But uh, caching zone. All right. So name server records. Here we go. What's this? Oh, this is a name for servers for a zone. Well, I want mine to be a name server. Now, maybe that's why I keep going in circles because I mean, my, my, my instructions I was following were really for setting up a, a, a caching server and not a name server. Oh, C name or <clears throat> conical name records are like shortcuts for host name.
Huh. Okay, well, you put the IP and then you put the, uh, you know, the, your domain name even or the host name in this case. It's not. A, well, this is www, so it is a domain name. <coughs> I think it might say, well, I'm not going to. Something to let you know it's local instead of www. Example.com. They say example.com, but then they put in whatever big name is. <laughs> the X Records. Huh. Oh. Hmm. Put text files in there to tell, you know, people can s tell what's going on. Tell what's about your... Your name server. Time to live. Caching configuration. There we go. Yeah, you forget a period or a space. Yeah. Okay, bar. Bar log messages. Well, that's, I believe that's where. Yeah, well, right now, mine's not showing an error when I restart it, so I don't have errors. But I went through, that's probably the, I don't remember exactly what the name of what the error log I looked at, but I remember messages in there, so probably was the one I, there was a command to get to it. L, F, that's a command to get there. Var log messages, so I think I still have Midnight Commander open up in here. Yep, <clears throat> even still had a file. So var log I think I'm in var log log messages. Lots of logs in there. Messages. Oh, yeah. Let's read that. Well, now that's a way to lay something out where I can't read it. I mean, that's just too much junk jumbled up together, and there's a lot of junk. You can't page through it fast. You have to use the keyboard since it's not no no uh, mouse supported on here. Now, if I could search this, I guess I can, but it's hard to. It brings up what I'm trying to do and the the for Firefox. It does them both. So uh, if I could just search again, you know. There we go. So, uh, <clears throat> that's, oh, well, I want to say no, I don't want that happening, so, then I'm hitting enter. Anyway, this would just take forever to search through this way. <coughs> that's why log, log viewers are really helpful. <coughs> right here's one. So, I'm not even going to look through that. I don't know what good it would do me right at this moment. Might be just what I need, but right now I don't know. Okay, leave that in var. Okay, I would, did not expect to have so much trouble finding the specific, um, you know, specifics of what I want to see. Let's see what this is. Host command. See if the host is resolving correctly. After you have successfully added and modified your records. Oh. And then you should be able to do it in reverse. Okay, so let's try that. As an address. Of, um, well, you know what? I don't have the, uh, I never did take my router and point it to, uh, mail is handled by mail store secure server.net. Okay. So that's going in. Well, that's my external IP address there. So it's going through my, you know, secure server.net. That's GoDaddy's servers. Let's see. 
So I think what's happening, uh, see what happens when I do the IP not found. <clears throat> okay, well, it, it wouldn't be at all for sure because I, I hadn't done it because I wasn't ready to do anything. But let's go to let's go to the router and point everything to the Net Pro Max because when you start running commands like that, you you, know, you got to be pointed to it. Now that does that sometimes. Now I bet you it'll just go away. If I click it, I, I think it'll reboot the router. You know, I just now realized, yeah, and then that would lose. You no, know, all the stuff I did, I guess I never did actually reboot the router because if I did, it would. Uh, <clears throat> my stream is good. There's nothing wrong. I'm going to re reload the thing. Let's see. I did that once and it just made a mess out of everything. Um. Yeah, if my stream would have went down, I surely I would have noticed it. It's, it's still going all this time, so I don't think it ever went down. I just remember, realized I've been messing around with my router a lot, and, and I wonder if I rebooted it and lost my stream. I did that a couple times recently. <sighs> of course, that's another, one of the reasons why I make a backup video. <coughs> I had to upload them twice in the last week or so. What do I want? Forwarding. Okay. So I'm going to forward, now the rest of them are, oh yeah, all the SSH ports and, and everything except for the main website port, mate port 80, is actually going to uh, one, the, the Net Pro Max on 153, but uh, let's go ahead and point everything so that I'll know that whatever I get back, you know, whatever I search for, it is... <clears throat> That looks like it might be rebooting the router, but it doesn't. Yeah, everything's cool. Because <clears throat> you get that little spinning thing, and you think, oh, no, the router's rebooting, because that's what it does. Only it does it for longer when it does that. I've been using these so much that they're in the memory of the thing. Of the, you know, like previously typed text. Okay. 153, all that's 153, DNS server, HTTPS, all 153. And then the uh, <clears throat> port 80, T9100, it's for the fact, printer fax, but that's local, only local. And the scanner is 65, 66. That could be why that keeps, no, that's showing up in, well, it could be why it keeps showing up in ZenMap because it's in the router that way. But... <clears throat> It is only local. It's uh, managed. Isn't that what they call it? Filtered. Filtered. Okay, so this is all good. So now, let's see what happens when we go host bishop code up bids. Now it comes up exactly the same. So that didn't make any difference. Okay, now that doesn't come up the same. See, I'm still not up and going. Um, <coughs> As far as being able to see it on the local. Okay. Who is command? That's one that's you know, just a general domain owner details. Who is that? You, you can just run that no matter what. You know, if you just want to know something about a domain, about a domain and you want to do it, and you just want to do it in the command line instead of going to the website. You know, RND, RNDC command. Securely. Manage the name server securely. Check the status of the DNS server like this. All right. Oh, okay. So let's see, and then you can reload all zones like this. Oh. Add a new zone, recon reconfig. Oh. Well, let's try that. <clears throat> RNDC. I don't have this page in my field yet. RNDC status. All right, that's a little longer. Whoops. 
How am I going to roll back up? Oh, it, you know, the mouse does. That's one thing that the mouse. Oh, this is not. <laughs> that's right. The mouse does work in the terminal. <clears throat> Get myself turned around. There it is. Where'd it go? No, that's DNF group. Oh, it's back to groups. So it really wasn't. I thought it was really, really long. It's not. It's short. Okay. I always have the hardest time. I wish it would color code your last. Uh, I'm sure you could set that up, or at least in regular everyday terminals, you could probably set that up. I would like that. Color code your last, you know, time you type. Even if it's all, the, you know, it's all like red every time or whatever. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, version bind, Red Hat. See, it's a Red Hat program. It's not a Fedora program. Usually you see uh, Fedora. You don't see Red Hat in the name of, you know, in the, Name maker of the program or whatever on um, this code local dot local domain last configured Tuesday the 13th. That was what? Oh, of November. Last configured Tuesday the 13th of November. Well, this is the 12th. This is the 12th of November and it's Monday. What the hey? Only thing I can figure it's a different, yeah, different time zone <clears throat> because GMT. So wherever this time zone is, it's like two hours ahead of me. Evidently. Yeah, 41.37, so I guess that's like 41 minutes after midnight. And it's not, it's only 9.14 <clears throat> p.m. That must be a, uh, that must be not like a different time zone of America, but like across the world somewhere. The time zone, but I, this thing is not set up to be. I guess it is. Time zone must not be set to local. I thought. Well, I thought I did that during the installation. That's weird. Okay, then configuration file name config. Working threads. Debug level. Nothing. 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 Cursive clients, zero, 900, 1,000. <laughs> PCB clients, zero, 150. I guess it's zero of 900, and then what's the 1,000? And then zero of 150. Server is up and running. Okay, so it's see, server's up and running. <coughs> but will it do anything? <coughs> okay. Um... I knew it was up and running, but DNS resolver. Who is contacting me? DNS. Let's see, on Devain, it's going to be even a different name. ETC resolve config. Let's see if we can go there. <clears throat> now we want to go to resolve config. Oops. There it is. Let's view that. <clears throat> okay, now here's what we got. <clears throat> Search bishop code out local domain. Name server 7110. Those are local, 71, wait a minute, 7110, 1, 16, 1, 71, 10, 216, 2. Can't remember. Um, I'm just going to quickly do a search, see what Google has to say about it. All right, let's do that. <clears throat> Charter. 
All right, so that's a <clears throat> that's an, a charter I, charter spectrum see charter. Some of them still say charter because they were had them for so long. RNS dot charter RNS one. RNS. I wonder if that's an in a name server RNS one different kind of name server. Could be a charter name server. Oops, I should have went on down past all that. That's a form about <coughs> something. Yeah, this is a who is look up. It's on whois.com. <clears throat> okay. What you could do in the... I was thinking, well, maybe I'll do it in the terminal. Maybe I will here in a minute. This is the Charter Communications as the owner. See, they didn't... They didn't too many things to change to change everything to Spectrum. 71 through... 0 through 219... 16 and to all the way up to 219.255. They got all those. So that's what that is. <clears throat> that's charter. And uh, what is that command? I didn't think I wanted to. Who is? Who is example.com? I guess you can do. Let's go back to the. Oh, let's get out of there for now. I don't think you edit that. I think that's. Uh, back to the terminal I think you don't edit that file I think it's manual I think I'm not sure let's find out okay here we go oops <clears throat> same information just in the terminal I think who is 71 so it does you can do a reverse lookup on them it can be an IP or a uh, domain name yeah, it's just what we were look. I was looking at. I mean, if you're in the terminal already, you might as well do that. You know, you can read it pretty good. You don't have any ads or anything. <clears throat> so there we go. Pretty cool. <clears throat> um, okay, now let's go to our next command that we might. It looks like you. You know, you could. First line is used to default search domain, okay. And the second line indicates the IP address of the name server. Okay. You can use your own DNS server once your bind server is running. Just type them in the resolver config file. Oh, okay. Work with Linux DNS server is pretty easy. I hope you Okay, let's go back to our resolve config file. <clears throat> oh, it's your code at local domain. Okay, let's try this. I'm actually going to try something here. I'm going to comment these out. I'll just leave them right there. <clears throat> This is what I think I would need to make it work. Now, this machine is the only one that has a name server on it. 192.168.0.153. Uh, it's the only one <coughs> that... Um, you know, should be serving anything up. You might be able to use them all. Uh, but I just want to see, you know. <clears throat> That's why I commented them out so I wouldn't lose them. <coughs> Alright, let's try saving that. Save as F2. Now then. Let's look at it one more time to make sure it still looks like what we expect. 192.168.0.153. See, it says search bishop code local domain, but it has those charter IP uh, addresses in it. Okay. 
kind of wonder if yeah commenting it out works because at the top it has a comment okay i was good it's like well what if it sees those and it fouls it up or you know and those never reads mine but if i could put it on the top but i think it'd be fine i guess i could like i said it doesn't hurt Oh, that's in the view mode. Got to be in the edit mode. Oh, I'm in the wrong place or something. There we go. Oops, control V don't do the job. Now. Okay, I'm going to save it like that. How do you save F F2? Okay, now. Okay. <clears throat> Get back to the terminal there. Now, I saw some really nice, interesting commands. What have I got open? Group stuff. Okay. Um... It's not going to be long for I'm going to have to quit and take a break. But <clears throat> Okay, let's see. Maybe you want new zones or change the configuration of the service. You can reload the configuration like this. RNDC reconfig. Uh, let's see. What did it say? Yes, yeah, check the status status okay you can make a change to any of the zone files well, that's a zone file without reloading the service but you got to reload the service in order to what I need to do is check config and see if I broke it I think <clears throat> oh that was checking those specific files yeah those aren't zone files so that won't help okay So, I think I'll better just restart. Let's try reboot. <clears throat> okay. So, when it reboots, <clears throat> everything will for sure be restarted, and we'll see. I actually meant to run all oh, those. If I remember right, those check config and all that don't, I don't think they check that file. I'm not sure. So I'll just reboot it and see what happens. And if I messed it up, then I'm gonna, I'll know where to go right away to put it back. <clears throat> I do not remember editing that file. Except for, well, I saw the local, you know. What did that say? Bishop code, our local domain? Yeah. That's the name of the machine. If I edited it, I probably would have put Bishop Biz in there, or you know, probably would have, or Bishop I mean, Bishop Code.us.2. My homeip.net is what I used to have when I used IDNS forwarding. I don't have that anymore. That was what I used to forward it to. I don't think it's rebooted yet. Sometimes that extra stuff on the end will make it not uh, quit fighting. Could be taking longer to reboot because I made an error in it. <clears throat> May have already had my answer. What if it hung it up and it wouldn't boot? Boy, that'd be bad. Then I'd have to try to See, I can work in the terminal, per, you know, as long as I can read my information and see what to type or copy and paste as much as possible. But if I have to be, you know, physically on that machine and then trying to look at stuff, well, the only other way I can do it is, like, look it up on the laptop, but I have to type everything. And if you start typing long commands, there we go. <clears throat> Let's see. Well, let's don't get excited yet. We may, may not have broken anything.
<clears throat> oh, I just remembered the logs. It's something I should check into. I, you know, I, I've just been kind of ignoring that. Too much of work for ROQ22. What if that's my my problem with, you know, something that's really fouling me up and I haven't been looking into it? I don't. I didn't think so, but who knows? Okay. Um, wait. Let's see if still not found the local address. Okay, yeah, same. <clears throat> okay. NS lookup. Let's see, then get to NS lookup. I might as well just type that, I think. That one's easy to type. I think I had two spaces in there and it still worked. I did. It still worked. Didn't know that one could ever happen. Okay, NS lookup in uh, 7110. That's still those uh, charter uh, ones I just looked up a while ago, I think. <clears throat> I didn't save them in any, well, I saved screenshots maybe, but. Uh, and well, it, 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 it final it ends up at my, my uh, public IP though. So, but you still can't do the local and I, I'm pretty sure I know what that is now. I think it's just because I didn't put, I need to put the IP of this machine in my local allowed to look up things and I, I guess I should try that but uh, <clears throat> actually I'm getting to where I'm going to have to have a break so I don't think I'll try it now uh, what's the other one there's another command that's really helpful let's see this one here Host T. Yes, look up. Host T. Oh, that's why I was way down there because I had found it where I spelled. Yeah, Bishop code up biz. It'll s keep you right where the last time you were. Okay, and that's. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, okay. That's just that's telling you your your uh, name server. What name server are you using? Well, I'm still using Oh, I'm still using uh GoDaddy's. So unless I can get to it locally, I can't really find out if it's going to work because GoDaddy won't let me change it and put mine in there it says it's not available. I think it'd be available now after me doing what I did. I guess there's only one way to find out. It's going to take too long, and I'm needing a break so bad. I'm going to, I mean, I'll do it, and probably tonight, but I think I'm going to have to have a break first. So I think, um, I think what I really should do is figure out, if, get it to where I can do it on the local, on my local network, and then when I see it showing up there, then I'll be able to say, okay, point it to, uh, point GoDaddy to, my uh, may ns one dot bishop put up biz. Let's see if I can do that. I tried and tried to get that to work, and it didn't work. It, I don't know if it said not available. Was the uh, uh, just that error? No, I found no other information. I searched their page and stuff, <clears throat> and uh, I think hope I'm hoping actually that it just means it can't reach it. Not that some other crazy, you know, like not allowed kind of not available you know so uh, if it's not allowed in their system then i can't do what i want to do you know so uh <clears throat> yeah i want to run take a break and leave everything as it is and uh come back in a little while actually i'm getting hungry i guess what i should really do is take a long break and eat supper It'd be the smart thing i guess yeah, because if I just come back in like 10 minutes and already getting hungry, 
I'll be needing another break in no time. We'll see. Because once I eat supper, I get sleepy and I don't, can't do much. <clears throat> so we'll see. All right. Uh, I'll. Well, I won't swear I'll be back tonight, but that is that's my plan unless something gets in my way. All right. Could be tomorrow. Uh, okay. Bye bye.